Hi everyone, welcome to the session. <clears throat> Please confirm if you can hear me clearly. All right. Thank you so much. All right, uh, so today we are going to attempt another past exam from March, June 2019 uh, sample exam. It's called Smartware. So it's a good case study, a very different case study from the one we did yesterday. Um, and quite uh, and offers you quite a lot of different topics to revise and uh, yeah so we will be starting it but before we start officially i would want to keep like two three minutes for any questions you may have from yesterday also please check the handouts so today again you have the question paper you have the answer for today's case study as well as you have the examiner report for this case study. Can you all please confirm if you can see all these handouts, the questions, the answers, and the examiner report. Now there is another. <clears throat> uh, handout, which is at the top named as answer sheet. So this is the annotated sheet from yesterday's session. So if you are interested in that answer sheet, which I was filling during the session yesterday, here it is. You can download and keep it and use it. All right, now um, I gave you a little bit of homework. So um, how many of you have actually read the standard answers and the examiner report? Just give me a quick indication through the chat window if you have read the answers, the marking scheme and the examiner's report. Okay, that's great, Fiza, Alana, Gagan, great. Okay, so if you're not able to cover that yet, you still have time, do cover it. So, so do you think that those documents were helpful? Yeah, so that is for sure. So um, examiner's vocabulary is very rich. We can never reach that level of vocabulary and, you know, uh, length of the answers, but, but it's okay. You just make sense of the points that would be enough but com comparatively examiner report is written in a simpler language isn't it yeah so so you know every day we'll have to renew our motivation isn't it kagan Yeah, but I think that this March, June 2009, is it available in CV platform of ACCS? I'm not sure, but if yes, that's great. You can solve it there as well. Uh, all right, guys, so some of you were asking me yesterday about how you can get the feedback on your attempted, um, you know, papers. So um, we at SCANS do have a product where we offer students five different assessments, one mock exam and four assignments, uh, two of which are 100 marks worth and two of them are 50 marks worth for SPL. So if you are interested in that product, uh, so, so we give you the question, we give you a deadline, you have to solve and submit it on the uh, ACCA-like platform, the CBE and uh, we'll mark your script and give you the detailed feedback on that so if you're interested do let me know my email address i'll let me mention that so some of you you know those who are actually self-studying so some students wanted me to tell them some options so my email id is pasiha scans at outlook.com so if you want to know more about this product, you can email and ask me here, okay? Now it's time to get to 
the case study. All right, uh, for Khan, uh, the plan is to cover TT4U case study tomorrow, so don't worry about it. Let's uh, do this one today, one case study at a time, one day at a time, all right? Okay. Past webinars, June, March, of all the pieces I got. Uh, okay, so Elena, um, I think we should stick to what the examiner's format is for the briefing notes because two from data and subject is a very typical format for report, memorandum, and email. So can we like stick to what the examiner is telling us because at the end of the day, examiner is suggesting the way the exam is marked, being marked. So I think let's stick to that. Um, uh, Fiza, I won't be marking those scripts if you, you know, opt for that product. Uh, I won't be marking it, but we work with a team of uh, very trained markers. So they mark very exam level marking is done. And, you know, uh, you can also have a conversation with the marker at the end of the session. But if you are based in another country, then we'll have to make this arrangement maybe through a WhatsApp call or something, right? So do email me if you're interested and we'll uh, talk about it more. <coughs> All right, so let's start the case study. I think most of the participants have joined by now. So smart we are March 2019 case study. All right, pens and papers ready? Or maybe you know your laptops with a word document all set? Because I will want you to make your own summary as we are discussing the requirements. The requirements in this particular case study are comprehensive. Uh, might take a little bit longer, but let's see if we are able to make sense of the requirements. All right, so can you please confirm if you're ready with a pen and paper or maybe your laptop or maybe some form of document where you are going to make the summary? Yes, ready? Great. So again, today uh, I'm using the PDF version. Uh, I will soon go to the computer-based version uh, of uh, the exam uh, because uh, these two exams which I did yesterday and this one is not available on ACCA platform for me for the tutor's view so I will see if the yeah, uh, tomorrow's case study is available I'll do that but I know for sure that the recent attempt uh, and recent case study is definitely available so last session is definitely going to be more about exploring computer-based exam but a quick demo right the rest you can do practice on ACC platform, etc. Okay, so March June 2019, a nice case study, but uh, very different from what we did yesterday. So yesterday we covered uh, the industry, which is construction company, right? Road construction, right? Mainly. And today it's a clothing retail business. <clears throat> so I'm going to read the introduction. Okay, everyone, please, I need 100% attention here. Stop doing whatever you're doing. Stop thinking anything else. Stop using your phones. Okay, Smartware is a long established clothing retailer in Noria, a highly developed Northern European country, which is currently in the middle of deep economic recession. So, so much information already that Smartware is a company based in Noria, home country which is a developed European country. However, currently they are facing some economic problems, recession. Uh, the country is also experiencing political uncertainty because of its coalition government, who many influential commentators believe will not last for its full term of office. These two factors have contributed to record high levels of unemployment, low business confidence, and a steady decline in the standard of living of general population. The company also operates in two other countries of European, uh, in two other countries on the European continent, Southland and Central. 
okay guys i told you in the very first session also that i'm highlighting the entire paragraph only to tell you um or indicate that where exactly i'm reading from you don't have to underline everything in the exam only the relevant information so i have some relevant information here that there is high level of employment low business confidence and yes steady decline in the standard of living can i also assume that the disposable incomes must be falling which leads to low uh, decline in the standard of living right All right, guys. Smartware has enjoyed long-term business success mainly due to the fact that it has carefully positioned itself towards the lower end of clothing retail sector. Lower end means the product price is not very high. It sources its product directly from the supplier in low-cost economies, and it has been able to target a mass market with consistently low prices. This has meant that during the recent economic downturn. in noria it has been able to profit from the growing number of price sensitive consumers who have switched from the more high end of the clothing retail market to budget retailers like smartwear who are the market leader in this high volume market so so far the question is telling us that because of the recession and uh, uh, the growth in price sensitive consumers smartwear company was able to take benefit from it because already they were selling the low cost products however they are facing some problem next paragraph tells you about that so smartwear's long term strategy has always been based on low cost low price business model so that's their business strategy low price low cost which is described through its mission statement and goals however following a prolonged period of expansion and growth including successfully penetrating several other european markets the company is for the first time experiencing a market downturn in both its operational and financial performance so they're telling you that currently the company is facing all these operational and financial issues this appears to be in part due to economic pressure and the growing intensity of competition in all of its markets both at home and abroad at a recent board meeting to discuss the latest set of disappointing financial results it was proposed that an external consultant be appointed to investigate the deteriorating performance of smartwear and propose the best way forward to the company you are the external consultant engaged by smartwear and you have gathered the following information to help you with your assignment so again um here is your role throughout the case study so yesterday we had a different role in every requirement but in this case study in this past paper you have one role for all requirements so that's the that's the variety you can expect in spl exam so there are six exhibits again but please don't think that it is a standard in your actual this uh, in in, a, in some other past exams there are more than six exhibits as well so maybe seven maybe eight whatever is given you'll have to read it whether there are six exhibits or eight exhibits right okay requirements now so everyone please get ready make your summary along it is apparent that the downturn in smartwear performance can be in part attributed to external factors beyond company's control a recent national newspaper article further confirms that economic situation in noria has made trading conditions tough for the business therefore a good understanding of those external environmental factors so in this paragraph it's very clearly written external factors so the paragraphs which are above the requirement are relevant to understand the requirement do you guys know that so you'll have to read these two paragraphs carefully to understand and make sense of your requirement even more so don't overlook or don't undermine the importance of these two paragraphs which are above the requirement okay so therefore a good understanding of those external environmental factors negatively affecting the smartwear business model is essential so that action can be taken to remedy the current situation and improve the future prospects for the company and its investors the board of smartwear wants to fully understand how the general environment is impacting on the company as this will directly influence its ability to enable the business to succeed and prosper 
the board has asked you to brief the board on this issue for their next board meeting. <coughs> All right. Requirement specifically is to prepare briefing paper. Here is my format, which needs to be followed in order to get full professional skills marks. So prepare briefing paper to be presented at the next board meeting, which covers two parts. A, analyze the environment in which Smartware operates and consider how this might impact its business model, mission, and goals. So analyze the environment. Which environment they are referring to? The first part of the requirement is to analyze the environment. But can I say external factors mainly? Because the paragraphs above are telling us that story of external factors. So analyze the external factors and you have to consider how those factors are going to impact the goals and mission of the business. So that's the second part of the requirement that for each factor, you will have to tell the impact on the goals of the company. So do we know the goals of the company? Not yet, but they are given in one of the exhibits. So we'll have to figure out from the information what the goals are and how external factors are impacting the goals of the company. All right. How many points? So minimum five points to get 10 marks. But what if I forget about connecting my external factors with the goals and missions of the business? Can I say that I will lose half the marks maybe? So out of the total possible 10 marks, I might lose four or five marks straight away. So every part of the requirement is important. Next part, of the briefing paper will have to assess the major risks presented by Smartware business model. And so that's our first task and suggest appropriate mitigating actions to manage those risks. So you assess, identify and assess those risks. Assessment means discuss the impact on the company and then you suggest how we can reduce or mitigate those uh, risks, what actions we should take, right? So again, five, Risks can be discussed here. Half the marks are for assessment and half the marks are for mitigating the risk. So both requirements A and B have two parts in it. Professional skills marks are available for evaluation skill by assessing the identified risk at SmartWear objectively. So if you can um, specifically highlight the risk, which are the major risk of SmartWear, and at the same time, if the mitigating actions you suggest are according to the situation of smartware and if they're practical you will get these four marks as well so for 24 marks you have 48 minutes to write your answer just like we discussed yesterday next requirement <coughs> i think this first requirement is pretty straightforward yes or no i mean there's a lot of work to do but still no it's not okay so uh, Niranjan, can you please tell me uh, if there is anything which you're not able to understand? Uh, and in this question, uh, professional skills marks are for requirement B only. They do not belong to A, but we will still explain the points in part A properly. Yeah, of course, there, there's a lot of things to take care of, but uh, basic idea. I hope it's clear to everyone now. Uh, okay, so Neil is asking that for question number one, part B, can we use a tabular format? So guys, what do you have to say about this? Can we use a tab tabular form? What did I tell you yesterday? If examiner specifically asked you for a summary, or if examiners specifically ask you to uh, use some visual aids or use a table, 
then only you use a table. Otherwise, you should write the answer in paragraph form because that's the professional way of writing the answers. Okay. Absolutely. So you can't make a table for that. Ideally, you shouldn't. Okay, second requirement, everyone. So the board is becoming aware that Noria, the home country, right? Noria may not be the suitable country that it was 15 years ago for a business like Smartware to operate successfully in. The financial performance of Smartware in Southland is significantly better than being achieved in more established homeland of Noria. So they are operating in another country, Southland, and they are saying that they are doing better in Southland than Noria uh, or its other European markets like Centrum. So the board has asked you to help them understand why this is the case. To help with this task, you have gathered summarized information on the country of Southland, where Smartware opened its first retail outlet six years ago, together with comparative data for Noria, a neighboring country of Centrum. So again, I will have to wait and find out where this comparative data is given. So in one of the exhibits, so you'll have to wait. <coughs> okay, the company now has 30 retail outlets in all major towns and cities across the country of Southland where the economy is booming and Southland generates the most of Smartware's revenue as a national market after Noria. Prepare a report for the board in which you, part A, analyze the company's strategic position in Southland market to determine why this is important, why Smartware appears to be performing so well in this particular country compared to Noria. Which country? Southland. So you will have to explain the factors, the reasons why Smartware is doing better in Southland as compared to Noria. So we'll be comparing it with Noria naturally because the requirement asks us to do so, but main emphasis will be to figure out what is going so well in Southland. Yes? So country specific factor needs to be discussed. Now, what are the factors in Southland which suit the company so much that it's successful? So what are we going to do here? We'll be talking about mostly positive aspects of Southland or negative or both. Okay, read the requirement and then tell me. Only positives, only negatives, both positives, negatives of Southland. Mainly, uh, uh, uh. okay, Ikra says positive. Some people say both, but most of the students are saying positive only. Yes, analy analysis needs to be done, of course, analyze, but read the entire thing. You'll have to talk about positives here, mainly. And how do I know that? Please read it with me again. Analyze the company's strategic position in Southland market to determine why Smartware appears to be performing so well in this country. So there must be some positive going on. That's why we are successful. That's why we are performing so well. Can I say there is something negative? That's why I'm performing well. So guys, it's positives mostly. And of course the data is presented in a way that you are naturally going to be picking up the positives of Southland as compared to Noria. So Southland is ahead of Noria for certain factors. Okay, now, um, and yes, a little bit negative. Of course, the, the information is given in a way that it will naturally take you to do this. Uh, is this clear now? Especially those who think that negatives are to be considered too? Okay. But what if I write positive aspects at in the exam, I write one or two negatives. It's okay. It's okay. You have margin to make mistakes in the exam, right? <clears throat> okay. Professional skills marks. Uh, okay, guys, there is a model which can be used uh, as well. But again, I do not want to tell you that models are super important. They are not actually. It's optional to use models or not use half the model, not use the models at all, or fully use the models. That's your choice. And it also depends if, I, if we are able to remember the models and also if it clicks, right? 
So there is Porter's Diamond model, which can be used because Porter's Diamond model is used to evaluate the country-specific factors which contribute to the success of a company or an industry. How many of you know the Porter's Diamond model? Not that you must apply it here, just saying. Yeah, so, so you can apply those concepts if you want to. But main focus is going to be what's going on so well in Southland, which is making this company successful. Professional skills marks are available for demonstrating analysis skills in determining smartware strategic position in Southland market. So of course, by picking up the relevant information and explaining our points, we are going to get these marks. Second part of the report will be, um, the board agreed that the radical response to the current situation was required to reassure investors and the stock market by showing them the smartware board remained in control of the business and was willing to take essential action when necessary. The board decided that company needed to rationalize its operations by closing the 20 worst performing retail outlet in Noria and withdraw withdrawing entirely from neighboring country of Cent Centrum where Smartware 15 retail outlets were all suffering heavy losses and showing absolutely no sign of recovery. So guys here, they're talking about shutting down some of the outlets in Noria and all the outlets in Centrum. So what are we supposed to discuss? We have to evaluate the strategic and ethical implications. So number one, strategic, number two, ethical implications to smartware of the plant shop closures in Noria and the withdrawal from Centrum. So just be careful. Do not overemphasize on ethical issues only. Talk about strategic issues. Can you tell me generally, guys, very quickly, any strategic and any ethical issue which normally is linked to when company, you know, shut down operations or stores here? Anything which comes to mind? Let's talk about ethical first. Just one, people will lose jobs, absolutely. That's the ethical issue, right? And what do you think is the strategic issue? Uh, Ikra actually, Ikra says loss of revenue, but Ikra, these outlets are suffering losses. So I don't think that they are already re relying on these stores for revenues. Yeah, so strategic issue can be redundancy and legal issues, right? Loss of skill labor, very good point. Reputation loss, very, very good. Basit, I really like the way you're thinking. So reputation loss, uh, as, a, as in the perception of the company that this company is shutting down the operations, maybe they are going to, you know, just um, they're closing down so overall perception and reputation of the company in this way you know it's a big strategic issue and also what else uh, economies of scale might be lost very good point because you're shrinking down your operation so demand will be affected and maybe the bulk purchase discounts etc uh, it can affect your relationship with supplier as well because now you're ordering lesser maybe and then there is a social factor also. Absolutely, you can say that, you know, the stores were the part of the community and now the stores are being shut down. So it will have, an, uh, have a social impact as well. So even without reading the entire case study, we can talk about these points. So this is the type of the requirement where we should work really carefully to get maybe full marks, easy marks. So there are 12 marks I'll be discussing six points at least or maybe more depending on you know how many i can think of but the balance of strategic issues and ethical issues needs to be maintained okay professional skills marks are available for skepticism to underlying issues and problems which may arise from this strategic decision so <clears throat> maybe you can think about some positive aspects as well because this question is not restricting you to talk about negatives only but naturally when you close down the uh, stores and operations there are more negatives than positives <clears throat> so the two marks and this requirement is a total of 24 marks 48 minutes for you to write yeah <clears throat> any questions so far
So what do you have to say here, Niranjan? Am I pronouncing your name all right? Niranjan, I think it's it's the pronunciation. Okay, so, so, so do you think that this requirement is uh, better understandable than the first one? It was a little complicated, this one seems simpler part because they can get you you know straightforward marks so i'll have to be equally vigilant here right and i'm not going to give any chances to lose marks here because that's my chance to pick up most marks and you know and this will effectively contribute to me passing the exam yeah yeah so diversification risk is there that when you you know um are entirely closing down your operations in centrum so you are reducing the diversification and you're increasing the risk like that going again opposite to diversification so you're right Ikra. okay requirement three let's see if you guys could figure it out on your own so let me read it and let me ask you what am i supposed to do in this requirement so third requirement says that the executive summary of an internal audit report on smartware supply chain management has been given to you by the chair of the audit committee the report identified a number of significant issues in areas such as appraisal of existing suppliers performance and internal reporting provision on behalf of the board of directors the chair of the audit committee has, has asked you to provide the buying and merchandising director with an objective appraisal of the supply chain management arrangements at smartware to effectively address the various issues raised in this report so specific requirement is to draft a memo so that's my format so same format which we discussed yesterday as well so draft a memo to the buying and merchandising director so he is your audience which evaluates whether it is fine or not so which evaluates the effectiveness of internal control systems at the company so that's my first task to evaluate effectiveness of the systems so i'll have to read the relevant exhibit to know the systems right particularly on the procurement side so you'll have to talk about the procurement internal control system effectiveness and what's the second part recommend control improvements to rectify the identified areas of concern so now this sounds like that there are problems and you have to give recommendations for each of the problem here there are 12 marks available now this is an interesting question because in the exhibit there are actually three to four problems highlighted so for three to four problems we cannot possibly get 12 marks generally speaking right so here the marking scheme says that two marks per point are available for discussing the control problem and explaining it and two marks per point are available for recommending control improvements so you'll have to explain the problem and the recommendation like really well in order to get to that two plus two four marks per point is that clear so this marking scheme is a little off or different from general two marks per point but you see that there are two different aspects two different things that are to be discussed and also one more thing that when you read the exhibit it's very clear that there are three problems mainly discussed so you can't make internal control problems on your own by taking assumptions right okay professional skills marks are available for commercial acumen skills when recommending solutions to those issues highlighted in the internal audit report <clears throat> so Commercial acumen marks will be available for good relevant recommendations. 16 marks, 32 minutes. Requirement four. <clears throat> now requirement four is an interesting one. So it, this is about customer relationship management. And the story behind this requirement goes like Recently, commissioned market research has concluded that Smartware appears to have a no clear understanding of the profile of its customer mix and as a result, operate quite unsophisticated and ineffective marketing campaigns. 
Recent financial results indicate that Smartware is finding it hard to both retain and get repeat business from existing customers, and the company is clearly losing market share to both established competition and new e-retailers. So that's the problem they're facing. They're not able to engage and retain the customers. The sales and marketing director have been considering the development and implementation of a sophisticated customer database management system, CDMS. So this is the new system they are considering to implement. And what is the system? Incorporating a customer loyalty scheme. So it will have a, some scheme which is called the loyalty scheme to replace the existing very basic customer database. So they're going to have a more sophisticated software and a system to manage the customers, keep the data. So what may be the features of a very advanced customer database management system? I'm just generally asking. It's not very relevant to the requirement. So any sophisticated customer management system, what kind of features it may have? So anyone who could tell me anything so the first thing will be you know proper data maintained about customers now it will have yes artificial intelligence and what will be the implications of that so um so olu would you please tell me how, yeah it will help with the analysis analysis to identify uh the trends the patterns and behavior of the customer how it is changing how frequently it is changing what are the needs of the customer so it will have inbuilt you know sort sort of research uh going on in it as well as uh, it will be able to identify the specific pr preferences of individual customers and then it can help us have a proper marketing strategy it can help us with uh, key important decisions it can help us improve our product according to customers so a lot of things can be you know taken care of so these sophisticated system systems use big data and data analytics concepts right yeah so all of it which you guys it helps us to manage the marketing mix strategic planning Pro, uh, marketing, prom promotions, so all, all, all that can be done through having a good system, right? So this is what this company is aiming for as well. The marketing department, I'm reading it further. So the marketing department has undertaken a financial appraisal of this proposal to supplement the market research findings and this indicate that it is financially viable in net present value terms. You have advised the sales and marketing director that for the board to agree to the proposal a clearly stated business case more re and more reliable evaluation of the financial viability of the project will be needed she agreed and asked you to help her in this regard <clears throat> requirement is to write a report on behalf of sales and marketing director for presentation to the board which achieves both of the following number one describes the benefits of introducing a customer database management system including loyalty scheme for smartware so simple benefits of this kind of system but of course you will give your ideas but please don't forget to connect it with smartware and sometimes the only connection one can make by giving their idea is to use the name of the company so that works so for example if you talk about customized uh, promotions and customized marketing you can add that smartware can take benefit of customized marketing etc right so connection with the company and the information is important but it's a very simple straightforward uh, requirement so for six marks i might be doing three to four points professional skills marks are available for commercial acumen skills by demonstrating awareness of business and wider external factors impacting on the decision to implementing the DMS, yeah. So, which, which means that we need to have a broader aspect, broader knowledge of how these kind of systems may help. Requirement B, that that's interesting because we did this kind of question on day one. Evaluate the marketing department's NPV analysis 
So there is some NPV analysis in one of the exhibits and you have to evaluate it. Evaluate means whatever is right, you say it's right and whatever is doesn't seem very right, you show skepticism and you ask for more information or you just say that it's wrong and give your reasons. The logical reason has to be there. So evaluate the marketing department's NPV analysis that supports the CDSMS investment, questioning any underlying assumptions made. So we'll have to figure out what information we have and then we'll discuss it. Ten marks are here. One thing I know for sure that I'll have to talk about five to six points in total. And professional skills marks here are available for skepticism about the cash flow forecast used to support the proposal. So you're already given a prepared NPV analysis and you're going to kind of uh, demonstrate your skepticism. Do you remember the question from day one? Same business case and NPV. So it's the similar kind of question. However, the figures, some of the financial management concepts that are used are different. It's a very different project. The figures are different. Assumptions are different, but kind of in the same direction. It, are these requirements clear? Please confirm so that we could move on to the final requirement. So yesterday's case study had four requirements. This case study has five very comprehensive requirements. All right. Last requirement and examiner says that it wasn't it was not um, well taken care of by students and there were two reasons number one it was a little tricky so that's why I always suggest to cover the entire syllabus and don't leave anything because examiner can test you for anything so it's a very classic example of examiner testing you for very simple yet very smaller topics as well and secondly because it's the last requirement, so time management was an issue. So within little time, the students did not make a good effort to answer this question. This is what the examiner reports say, but let's see what this question is about. It's on integrated reporting, but uh, it's a little tricky, honestly. <laughs> let's see if we are able to find out. So it says that severe criticism was forwarded to the chairman of Smartware from an influential institutional shareholder about what is perceived as the short-sighted and narrow focus of the board on the low-cost, low-price business model. What is short-sighted and narrow focus? Narrow focus means that they are not taking care of all the aspects, multiple aspects, and short-sighted is like short-termism, that they are only focusing on short-term results. Maybe. So, you know, the institutional investor is criticizing the chairman for this. However, the board considers this criticism to be unjustified. So board of Smartware thinks that this criticism is not fair since its focus has always been on the wider and long term strategic interest of Smartware that has enabled it to achieve sustainable business growth. The board believes the most probable reason for the criticism is the lack of understanding by certain investors of smartware business rational and companies integrated thinking. So board thinks that our investors, our shareholders do not understand our uh, broader integrated thinking. To further improve the effectiveness of communication with investors and wider stakeholders community, the board of smartware decided to adopt its own version of integrated reporting framework the board unanimously agreed that best results would be achieved when the company takes a more holistic view of its operations and performance. So you are tasked to brief the board on how to make this message clearer to investors. What does the holistic, holistic view actually means? Having a holistic view of operations and performance. What does that even mean? <laughs> so it means comprehensive, how different areas are connected to each other, a bigger picture. Yeah, so full view, bigger picture, considering all stakeholders, so all of this, right? Now, um, requirement specifically is that you have been asked by CFO to help him make the case and persuade the board, not just the board, also his own finance team that integrated thinking and integrated reporting framework should be adopted at Smartware. So prepare one slide, just one slide with appropriate notes the speaker notes, the explanation of the bullet points of the slide, for a brief presentation to be given by CFO at the next board meeting, which describes the benefits of integrated thinking within Smartware to all stakeholders. 
Now, this is not a requirement, which is very difficult. You have to talk about the benefits of integrated thinking, which means that how the organization create value for different stakeholders, for different aspects, for example, environment, for example, society, for example, uh, employees, you know, how the organization is creating value, how stakeholder claims are satisfied, how interlinkage between all these elements are taken care of. So basically, you'll have to explain the benefits of having an integrated thinking that we take care of so many things together. Yeah. So benefits of having a bigger picture in front of you, not just profits, but also non-financial aspects and broader external factors like uh, so social uh, factors and environmental factors. So, so the idea behind integrated uh, reporting. Is this requirement clear? And you can see that there are six marks available for one slide. So you can have like four to five or six possible uh, bullet points advantages and then you can explain those four or five advantages maybe five uh, one by one in the speaker notes but this is something the audience for this particular slide is who this all stakeholders so we have to be very generic in our discussion i mean we should be talking about uh, the benefits to stakeholders one by one rather than using very uh, specific finance terminologies please confirm if this requirement is clear and please take care of the audience you are addressing this slide for making it for all stakeholders to make them understand what you believe in yes there are professional skills marks for both requirements together at the end Kagan. <clears throat> is this clear So now to uh, answer this question well, you need to have a proper understanding of what integrated reporting is. <clears throat> okay, second requirement is to prepare a briefing paper for CFO to allow him to address the wider finance team. Now the audience has changed from stakeholders to finance team. So now CFO is addressing his own team, which are finance people, to explain how corporate reporting using IR framework provide more relevant information for smartware shareholders about the creation of sustain sustainable long-term value. So normally when we have to tell the shareholders that we are creating value for them, that mostly means, you know, the value of the company, the capital the company has, right? So here, how would we be able to tell finance team members that how we are creating value for shareholders so so what should i do here what should i talk about here any idea so you have to tell how corporate reporting provides more relevant information corporate reporting using integrated reporting provides more relevant information how by highlighting six capitals, we highlight companies' capitals or assets in six different uh, angles. So human capital, manufacturer, manufactured capital, you know, all six capitals. So that's what needs to be discussed here. So what's the difference between A and B? In A, we are telling about the general idea of integrated thinking, not the format, not the capitals because we are talking to all stakeholders and in part B we are talking to finance team so they will be able to understand the, the six capital language as well as it is the format of integrated reporting so you know finance team will be better able to understand that so you will discuss six capitals here one by one and you will give relevant example of all capitals from smart wear scenario so don't give general example of human capital or intellectual capital not general example but specific smart fear examples and again standard answer will help you we will also quickly discuss some points at the end but now it's time to read the exhibits can we take a quick five minutes break before we start reading the exhibits to explore more about the case study okay five minutes and then we'll start the exhibits thank you very much
Uh, all right, can we start? All right, so exhibit one. So these are briefing notes prepared by the business development department for the consultant. And who's the consultant? It's you guys, right? So you are supposed to be the consultant for all requirements. Okay, so Smartwear mission statement is given. Our mission is to make wide range of good quality fashion, which is responsibly sourced, available to everyone at affordable prices. So that's the mission statement of the company. And then you have to achieve the mission, the board has agreed the following strategic goals. Number one, continued investment in all continued investment in all of our core markets that continue to offer significant growth opportunities to satisfy the needs and demands of low cost products and services of all customers so here the missions and goals are given so so do you think we need to like carefully read these goals and mission statement are they relevant to any given requirement where we specifically have to consider these objectives and goals and mission of the company? If yes, which requirement? Yeah, so we have to, question number one, part A, right? Excellent. So question number one, part A is relevant. And uh, what are we supposed to do? We have to connect the external factor with the goals, right? How the goals will be impacted. So can you tell me any of the external factor mentioned in the introduction, which can impact, which will have an impact on goal number one? Let's see if you remember anything. Waiting for your answer. Okay, economic recession. So how it will impact this continuous need for investment and all? Okay, so it was mentioned that there is recession and that there is low business confidence. So when these things are going on, there's low business confidence, what happens? Would this business be able to continuously invest? So can we say that the external factor is that there's low business confidence that is adversely affecting the company? Um, it's a threat and it is going to be affecting the objective of continuous growth because company cannot because there's no um, you know business confidence so this is how you have to connect the external factors with the objectives but do explain the factors as well whether they are threat and why they are threats if there are opportunities why do you think they are offering any opportunities okay next uh, goal is develop strong long term relationship with our key suppliers based on mutual respect and serving each other's interest so do you think um, any other external factor will impact this okay i need participation here anything which you uh, can think of So having a good relationship with key suppliers so this recession might impact the need to negotiate more about prices isn't it and maybe you know uh, less purchasing from suppliers right this is this is a relevant point and uh, also um, <coughs> so, so negotiating the prices and maybe you know not offering them um, fair prices that can happen too so this will all impact the relationship with our key suppliers now you don't have to link each factor with each goal i'm just saying that you can connect some points with some goals but not all goal not you don't have to go one by one and cover all the goals no, no that is not the examiner asked for Okay, functions with the highest ethical standards of social responsibility, expecting the same from all business partners. So there is going to be social impact, isn't it?
um, the some of the ethical standards might be. Yeah. So, so Fiza, can you be specific here? How to construct answer? Okay, let's let's construct one point first. So, can you write that there is low business confidence because of recession and because of this political instability? There's sense of uncertainty. So, first you write this line. So, without having confidence in political leadership, investors are less inclined to take the risk and invest their money. So this will will have negative impact on goal number one, which is continuous investment. The company will not be able to keep up with this goal and will not be able to, you know, uh, keep on investing because of this situation. So this is how Fiza, you can make up these points. So that's one point, but there are so many others. Now there are economic factors like unemployment, right? Then there will be social factors and all. So as Elena said that we can use pestle model here, but connect those pestle factors with these goals. And uh, also Fiza, don't worry about it that you don't have to connect uh, these factors with all the goals. So where do you th where you think they can fit in? Okay, uh, the next goal is to maintain a successful and viable company that delivers healthy financial returns. So now, don't you think it's getting harder for the company to keep the financial returns coming in? Yeah, because of these economic factors. So again, economic factors can be connected here as well. And last is be a responsible custodian of the user of natural resources, which are managed in a uh, sustainable way. So uh, there is no mention of any environmental factors. Okay, now guys, we have just read the introduction. Uh, there are external factors. There are more external factors coming up in one of the exhibits. So then you will be better able to connect them with these objectives. But do you understand that you can connect these factors with the goals here? Maybe a direct link, maybe an indirect impact on the goal. So indirect impacts are also good. Okay, to figure out your answer, Elena, let's go back to the requirement. So Elena is asking that can we link these goals uh, with the fact that Smartware is leaving another country or should we uh, connect these only with a home country situation? So it says that analyze the environment in which Smartware operates and consider how this might impact the business model. And um, uh, this, these two paragraphs suggest that we are mainly talking about Nordia. So Elena, it, it is going to be home country mainly. <clears throat> because they're more prominent anyway. There's another exhibit which has, um, yeah, generally it says where it operates, but they mean to say home country of Noria because the paragraph is very clear cut. And also the external factors of Noria country are mainly mentioned in the introduction as well as in another exhibit. Okay, next uh, paragraph is about governance arrangements. So, Smartware has a balanced board of directors, most of whom have been with the company for more than a decade and whose responsibilities cover all of its core business functions. The five non-executive directors ensure that the board and the company remain fully compliant with Noria Code of Corporate Governance, a listing requirement for all companies on the Noria Stock Exchange. The any days, being part of unitary board, discharge their duties respons and responsibilities through a number of subcommittees with the uh, expressed authority to challenge and scrutinize the executive members of the board. Now, there is no specific requirement on corporate governance, so we can leave this information as it is. We don't have to use every paragraph and every line in the answer. You know that, right? Business development. Since it was listed on Noria Stock Exchange five years ago, Smartware has enjoyed uh, success at that time it had only 40 retail outlets in Noria but since then through careful and planned investment the company has achieved sustained growth and become 
a substantial multinational business, over 100 outlets in Noria, and a similar total number of stores in several other European countries. All right. <coughs> Industry analysts have remarked that Smartware has never exploited e-commerce opportunities when there have been several new entrants in the market in the past few years who only sell online. The convenience and quality of service that these e-retailers provide have proven to be very appealing to many Smartware's traditional customers who have shifted their patrons and loyalty. The absence of the detailed customer data have prevented Smartware from mitigating these the risks presented to its market share from e-commerce. So do you think this paragraph is also relevant for any requirement? So do you remember question number one, part B was to identify, assess risks and suggest the mitigating strategies? Mm, yes, you can link it with the technological factor, Elena. In question number one, part A, so very, very intelligent point. So yes, there, there are actually two aspects. You can discuss this as a technological factor that in the general retail sector, e-commerce is very uh, much needed now. And it's very useful and very successful. And new e-retailers are coming in. And with that, you can also, you know, save some costs, which can drive down the prices which the customer wants. And that is also one of our objectives to meet the customer needs. Do you understand what I'm saying? So Fiza, you were confused. Can we also write this point that e-business is um, in full swing in e-retail sector? I'm talking about question number one part A. And um, companies, um, and it can be a threat because company is not opting for it so if they won't opt for it this uh, will also impact the objective which objective of maintaining of meeting the demands of the customer this service for all customers etc so this is something the company needs to take care of as well as everyone please listen as well as there are two risks in this paragraph which you can discuss for question number one part b what are these two risks number one lack of e-commerce the risk of e-commerce so if we don't pick it up if we don't use it the e-retailers will take our market share away from us and number two risk is the changing market dynamics or customer patterns. For example, they are now liking e-commerce better. So these customer patterns, if not taken care of, will lead to customer dissatisfaction and customer actually leaving you. So these are the two risks you can actually talk about separately. Maybe you can combine and discuss it in one go. It's up to you. But I can uh, think of these two points from the risk management aspect as well. And thank you, Elena, for highlighting that this is also the technological factor for question number one, part A. And of course, this will, uh, if not taken care of, if these factors are not taken care of, they will take the company to strategic drift, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. You can use technological factors in both part A and B. But because your context is different, Kagan, the explanation is according to the need of the both both the requirements. So you will get marks both uh, in both situations and for both parts. It's very intelligent to use the same information for both requirements. Um, it's a win-win. Lack of CDMS is a risk too, Ikra is right, but uh, Ikra, they are already taking care of this new system, isn't it? So in long term or in future, this risk will eliminate. So we only discuss those risks which have a certain, uh, which can create certain threats for the company in future. But CDSM is taken care of, isn't it? Yes, uh, absolutely. So Fiza is asking, will we get marks if we use the same information in two different answers? 
So yes, you will get the marks in both answers. Why? Because the context is different. And does that make sense? Let me ask you this question. Is the explanation we just discussed, is it relevant? Does that sound logical? If yes, you will get the mark. Okay. Exhibit two. Exhibit two is a long exhibit where, and uh, not a lot of information relevant to requirements, but some points are definitely relevant. So let's read these and cover these as well. Okay, exhibit two is transcript of a recent smart wear board meeting discussion which took place before the external consultant was appointed. Chairman said that uh, the next item on the agenda is a review of our recent financial performance, which I know is of real concern to us all, particularly with the poor economic conditions currently face, uh, we currently face in Noria and the weak performance of our operations in Centrum. This is despite a somewhat optimistic recent newspaper article report suggesting that things in Noria may improve next year. So I have asked the finance director to present to us the fact so that we can decide on the best way to move the business going forward. So because of this chairman's statement that the future might get better, we are not going to be talking about financial risk the company is currently facing. Is that okay? Let's not talk about financial risk in the risk question because this seems that it might get solved. So risk should be discussed if they have a like future uh, consequence and the very clear cut evidence is there. Just like e-commerce risk and you know customer pattern change and if you do not if you are not able to keep up with that okay finance director says thank you mr chairman it is true that our current financial statements do not present the company in a particularly strong position however it is not all bad news the profit levels have fallen primarily because our sales revenue has dropped significantly over the last year however we have managed to maintain tight cost control over our suppliers, so our gross profit margins are still holding well. Unfortunately, we are victims of our success in recent years, which means that we now have significant infrastructure costs and uh, overheads to carry because we are much larger business than we were previously. So here I can kind of pick up a risk that the costs are uh, increasing because of infrastructure and overheads, etc. So cost control may be a future problem for this business. And then if this cost control is a problem, this will affect the price and the company may not be able to offer the same low prices as it was originally doing. This may mean the failure of low cost strategy and a strategic risk, maybe. So what is the, can you suggest a mitigating action here? Can you guys please try and tell me if this is the risk we talk about in the exam, what do you think is the suggestion which you would like to write in the exam? Increasing sales, okay. Use new technology, more efficient technology, which leads to cost reduction. E-commerce is a way of reducing costs as well. Price fixing for overheads, etc. Excellent. Do proper budgeting, planning, and control of the cost. You, you guys are giving me impressive answers. And then uh, assessing cost control better and managing the cost, maybe finding suppliers which are offering better prices, looking to go for you know more demand and economies of scale. So all of these are good suggestions, right? Okay, let's read the next part. So NED stood and got the attention of the finance director. I'm sorry to interrupt you. So they're kind of, you know, indirectly fighting, not exactly fighting, but you know, counter arguments are going on. So NED stood up and said, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I have something important to add at this point, and it may alter what you say next. One of our largest institutional investor contacted me because we have other mutual business interests stating in very clear terms that we were dissatisfied with the level of returns that are currently um, getting on their investment in smart peer. 
they have seen a significant fall in share price value and are concerned about whether there would be any proposed annual dividend. I would just like to provide them with assurance that these rumors are wrong and that we can expect our share price to rise again in the near future. <clears throat> Finance director says, thank you for bringing this matter to our attention as I too have difficult conversation with number of investors over the past few weeks. I suspect that it might be from some of my discussion that they are worried about a suspension of the dividends. However, I'm afraid it is true and it was going to be one of the proposals I was able to later uh, table later at this board meeting. With the current state of company finances, it would be negligent of me as finance director to recommend a dividend this year and deplete our cash reserves further. Also in accordance with Noria stock exchange listing rules, the company has to issue a profit warning when forecast earning levels fall significantly be be below analyst expectations, which I regret they now do. This is likely to result in further downward adjustment in our share price, at least in the short term. I need to interrupt it again. The institutional investor further suggested to me that the strategic direction of the company is completely wrong and the smartware has become out of touch with its core customer. He suggested that this is the main reason why company has been losing sales to competition and unless the board make radical changes, the situation may get far worse. I'm afraid that simply informing our investors that things are as bad as they thought will not reassure them about the board's ability to turn around the business the absence of detailed and accurate information about customers and the lack of technology to systematically capture and analyze such information is putting smartware at a competitive advantage disadvantage therefore i propose i that we engage the services of an external consultant to investigate what is currently wrong with smartware and to report back with proposals on how the business can return to the success a fresh pair of eyes is always useful when a critical and objective appraisal of a difficult situation like this is required. All right, this concludes exhibit two. Now let's have a look at exhibit three. It looks promising. It is only two paragraphs. Okay, it's an exhibit, which is an article from Noria Herald dated 21st February, uh, more doom and gloom on the horizon. So having already suffered more than three years of economic misery, there is still no end insight for the poor people of Noria. A recent report issued by finance minister has forecast negative economic growth, which in uh, reality means further decline for Noria due to the, during the whole year and possibly beyond. Price inflation has been running as nearly 7% 7, 7 over a year, which is high for the Noria economy, but with a uh, stagnating economy, the central bank will, will be reluctant to raise interest rates. So with more than 8% of adult population currently unemployed, an austerity program imposed by government because of reduced taxation revenue, the prospects in Noria still looks pretty bad. So it's an external factor, the same recession story, which was kind of given in the introduction as well. Yeah. So it ha it, it's, it's highlighting the external factors even more clearly. Next paragraph, the big question must be, are there any signs of economic recovery, which a reporter from Noria Herald asked the finance minister at a press briefing yesterday, to which he, his reply was, so, so if you are able to successfully survive to zero time period without any more important business going into liquidation or further heavy job losses, then it seems that econ economic recovery may start as early as next year. This is our expectation, but we have to wait and see. Okay, can we say that this is one of the ethical uh, situation if we close down 20 stores in Noria? I think question number two, part B, is about discussing the ethical issues. So one of the issue, if we close down the stores in Noria, is that there will be more unemployment, there will be job losses, and minister says that if there are more job losses, it will the com the country will not be able to come out of the this e economic problem so can can we also talk about it a little picking it up from here maybe yeah so a mix of external factors and a little economical or social factor i would say so you can talk about this while talking about unemployment issue Exhibit four, 
what does this exhibit look like? It's the comparative macroeconomic data for three countries, Noria and Southland and Centrum. So it's the comparative data of three countries. So where do you think it's going to be used? Quick answers, please. I mean, there, there was a question where we have to compare Southland with Noria and discuss the factors which are better in Southland as compared to Noria. Question number two, part A, excellent. So we'll have to figure out the positive aspects as we discussed. So uh, let's have a look at uh, Southland and Noria specifically. I'm going to ignore Centrum. Uh, you can have a look at it later because my main concern is talking the positive, highlighting the positive aspects of Southland and comparing it with Noria. So, first things, population. They have a population of 104000000. And Southland has a population of 5780. So as compared to Noria, Southland has a smaller population. I mean, I'm not saying it's a positive aspect. I'm just saying they have a smaller population. However, from this population, working age population is 3450. What percentage of total population it is? Can you tell me the percentage? So three four five zero triple zero divided by five seven eight zero triple zero, more than fifty percent, right? It's exactly sixty. So can, can I say majority population is working? And unemployment rate is six point two current year so majority population is working and employed do you agree with my point let me repeat in southland majority of the population is working and most of the population is employed only 6.2 percent people are unemployed yeah, so I think this uh, uh, has a lot of good points of Southland over Noria. I agree with you, Elena, but I'm just giving you an idea of how to write a point in the exam. So most of the population is um, in employment. And this is one of the good factors in Southland. So the people are working. It's it's uh, if you use the Porter's diamond model, this is one of the factor conditions that you know people are working for the country and you know working for the economy. So that makes the Southland a more attractive uh, country as compared to Noria. And then talk about Noria that you know working age population. Um, I think it's a lower percentage as compared to Noria, and their unemployment rate is high. So you know Southland is better in this and also one of the factors you can talk about is that and look at here dominant business sectors in southland includes transportation and shipping so it's it's good it's a good idea for uh, smartware to ship and transport their goods and products very easily however in noria this is not an option they, their major industries are financial services, retail, defense, tourism, but transportation and infrastructure is not there, as well as technology development is like greater. Um, I mean, it's the main industry in Southland and not here in Nordia. So that is also one of the aspects you can discuss. Yeah, so related and supporting industries are there. So these kind of factors you will have to explore. From this particular 
exhibit anything else which you could highlight which is better in southland than nordia one of the factors which makes southland a more attractive market it was mentioned in the uh, paragraph above the requirement is that uh, companies earning more profits in southland than in home market so this is another factor which makes southland a more attractive country right and lower inflation in southland as compared to noria which means uh, goods in southland are cheaper than noria and you know the demand might be greater consumer debt is lower in noria that means oh consumer debt is lower in southland which means that yes so you can discuss the debt burden here so i think uh, just explore this exhibit one by one and whatever you think is better in southland just talk about it and you will get your marks right but just explain your points a little bit annual earnings are high yes that too annual earnings in southland are higher than noria so people are uh, spending more money hence we are earning more in southland than you know in uh, our home country so it's a straight comparison but what examiner is looking for is a little explanation of your points okay exhibit 5 now yeah so technology aspect we already discussed that is for sure and technology is something you can really expand on that this is something which is very much needed in the retail sector the customer preferences are changing right and they want technology and e business aspect which is better in southland of course yeah so the introduction does tell us that noria uh, political situation in noria is not great right so you can also discuss that and when political situation is not great the support from government is also not great right so it appears to be better in southland so i think a lot of points but choose your points carefully and explain them according to uh the marks okay exhibit 5 now guys <laughs> so exhibit 5 is executive summary of smartwear internal audit report on supply chain management um which requirement do you think will be relevant here So this is straight away for question number three. You're right. Okay, executive summary of Smartware internal. <coughs> Audit. Report on supply chain. Introduction. This report analyzes the effectiveness of the supply arrangements between Smartware and its core suppliers, all of whom are based in countries in Southeast Asia. the report itself was requested by the audit committee when the information about alleged poor working practices among some suppliers were was brought to its attention however the scope of this internal audit extended beyond this narrow social responsibility issue uh, into broader operational and financial management aspect of smartware supply chain so let's see what are the clear cut problems supply chain management is particularly imp important to smartware because as a retailer a very significant proportion of direct cost cost relate to inventory purchases which in turn directly impacts on corporate profitability and investors return appraisal of existing supplier performance so we have to talk about the problems uh, on the procurement side so the supplier issues are all relevant right okay it says that most suppliers 
have been working with smartware for more than five years and then have been no uh, and there have been no reported instances when purchase orders have not been completed on time or in full this has led to a rather complacent attitude from buying department who do not see the point in fixing something that isn't broken so they are so used to not hearing to the problem that they have like kind of assumed that if there is no mention of a problem we don't need to find out if there is any problem right so as a result if no quality problems arise the uh, arise the buyers rarely contact the suppliers which led to a culture of carelessness so can i highlight this culture of carelessness as a problem and how to explain it you can pick up information from the paragraph give your own analysis give your own touch to it as well just don't copy paste and leave it alone okay further um, yeah poor supplier management as well so it's more supplier management right <coughs> uh, okay next uh, it says that supply contracts are awarded for a period between three and five years with prices charged indexed to inflation this means that prices rise annually by only a few percentage points which is then built into smartware's budgeting process no effort is made by buying department during contract contract period to compare what prices the company is paying to its supplier compared with industry average or competition so overall the culture of carelessness in this paragraph is very much highlighted not comparing the prices not finding out if there are any problems with the supplier you know so what what's your suggestion how do we go about it i need to hear it from everyone please make an effort and tell me how can this um, <coughs> ineffectiveness of control system the culture of carelessness in terms of not finding out evidences of problem and not you know contact suppliers to figure out if there is anything wrong and also this uh, not comparing prices so your answer needs to be properly explained because there are two marks for explaining the problem and two marks for suggestions so maybe you can give multiple suggestions for one problem you can give multiple suggestions in spl and with each new well explained suggestions the marks will increase can you please note it down somewhere that for one problem you can give multiple suggestions maybe for one problem two suggestions but not too many so kagan is suggesting that we can have shorter period of supply contracts so that you know the prices are redefined and also the contractual terms could be you know renewed every time according to the change in situation so that that is one good suggestion review the supplier list regularly and think about changing those suppliers which are, which are not keeping up with um, our demands in any way right so being uh, we have to be in touch so can we have a mechanism so maybe having a monthly uh, meeting with the supplier if not face to face then online in order to make supplier feel that the company cares about the suppliers and also to figure out if there are any problems in this business right also for the price situation we need to have a proper comparison after frequent intervals with the industry inflation rates and then adjust those prices in our budgeting accordingly communicating the problems with supplier on time so all of these so some of the points can be merged together uh, to give uh, to be written in the answer and you can as i said earlier can give two suggestions for one problem also and they will give you added marks okay let me open the standard answer for this one and see how the examiner has actually <coughs> discussed this particular requirement this one is like specially important because it has one point has four marks here two marks for discussing the problems and two marks for uh, 
suggestions. Okay. So cost controls are discussed here in which the culture of carelessness is discussed. So cost uh, needs to be controlled, right? Because um, this is the only way you will be able to offer lower prices. So the internal audit report claims that there is a culture of carelessness among smartware buyers who do not engage closely with clothing suppliers. The result is that the cost of individual supply contracts is not reviewed compared against the industry average, right? And uh, only negotiated when they come up for renewal after several years. This means that smartware could be incurring avoidable increase in cost base and result erosion of gross margins. This is particularly damaging during the periods of economic difficulty and so on and so forth, right? So the suggestions examiner has given at the end, not with discussion of the problem. So recommendation control improvements are given here. They are about cost controls. Uh, and setting out expectations and competencies needed. Um, proactive in management of the supply contract as you guys have suggested too, right? So pretty much the same things, but of course the answer of the examiner is a little more fancy uh, than a regular student answer, but they must be read in order to make more sense of the situation and for more ideas, okay? Okay, let's continue reading from the exhibit. So the allegations that have been made about poor working conditions in some supplier factories have gone unchallenged. Okay, so there are some allegations that there are poor working conditions in some of our supplier factories and we are never able to challenge them. I mean, uh, the smartware management attitude is that they don't care what is going on in suppliers factories. Okay, I have a question here. Do you think it's the responsibility of smartware to take care of the working conditions in the supply factories because it's the ethical issue as well as can become strategic as well uh, too because the terms of the contracts normally have points like this included as well that uh, if I'm you know going into a contract with a supplier I will tell the supplier that the your factory conditions should be up to the mark yeah, so indirectly smartware can be affected and uh, the, the paragraph does said that it's the part of the contractual obligation. Let's read the full part. Uh, okay, so have gone unchallenged and even possibly unnoticed by the buying team. So that's negligence at buying team's part. Don't you think so? If the, they, they are not even noticing it. If the supplier had been more effectively monitored then the buying department would have identified a clear contravention of the general terms and conditions contained within all smartware supply contracts. So it's the part of the contract. So that's more alarming that why the, uh, you know, our team, the buying team is so negligent. So that's a major problem because that can affect the reputation that can take smartware into some sort of litigation problem. These standard terms, the contract terms, are a reflection of Smartware's own corporate social responsibility commitment. So they have added in the contract terms their own social responsibility and integrity element. They'll have to keep up with it. However, as the buying department operates as a cost center, the buyer's primary motivation is always to keep costs down rather than monitor the ethical practices. So do you think you will be able to exaggerate or maybe make it a little dramatic by saying that it has both ethical as well as strategic implication. So this control system is absolutely not effective. The working condition situation. So what do you suggest? Yeah, and it's going against the contractual terms to ICRA. So ICRA says that poor working conditions being unnoticed is affecting the social responsibility of smartware and it's going against the terms of the contracts too, where they have 
themselves promise to take care of it so what do you guys suggest so you will explain all the reputational and the litigation and um, the unethical situation all of it will be discussed in the problem but what is the solution because there are two marks to give the suggestions to improve this what should we do should should we say that we should remove all kinds of social responsibility uh, demonstration from the contracts do you think it's a good answer don't accept any social responsibility what do you think not at all examiner will th say that what kind of a strategic leader suggests this kind of you know points okay so what we can do is we can go for um, proper monitoring system having a proper mechanism to see if the terms and conditions of the contract are being met or not also can we train and educate the supply uh, buying team about the importance of these ethical matters as well and how they can affect the company so trainings or uh, education then reviewing the terms of contracts enforcing the terms of contracts having a mechanism going for audits somebody has to be um, responsible to figure out at regular intervals if this is taken care of or not maybe we can have like um, uh, visits planned to the relevant suppliers factories again after certain intervals to see if the working conditions in those factories are actually up to the mark or not can we do that so this will kind of enforce this particular uh, thing yeah so having a proper committee or a team um, checking or overlooking whether it's taken care of or not oh yeah internal audit visits can be done so all of the ideas are uh, relevant and fine as long as you're able to explain them um, and if you are convinced that this will solve the problem for the company let's see what suggestions the examiner has given for this particular problem so corporate social responsibility issue right so that's the second problem discussed here and you know breach of supplier contract poor working conditions and all of it okay you can read the answer later but i'm more interested to show you uh, okay th these are the suggestions right sorry sorry so what we can do to get this issue solved so the examiner says those suppliers who are in clear breach of their supply contract need to be formally advised that they must immediately bring the working conditions of factories up to minimal minimum acceptable standards or the contract will be cancelled so it's a threat to supply if they don't keep up with the working conditions promise their contract will be cancelled i think this point was highlighted by elena elena was your point telling the same thing that we should be talking to supplier and if they do not keep up with our you know sort of um, suggestion or advice we should end up working with them okay however their remedial actions will need to be independently validated so some of you suggested having a committee to overlook this audit internal audit visits etc so this is exactly the same thing so even if you don't use these fancy terminology from here you will still get marks so um you know communicating whatever is in your mind is important and most of the times uh, you will be surprised to see that examiner answers have the very same ideas so it says that independent validation that this might be achieved through smart peer auditors making periodic un uh, announced spot checks ikra you you'd said the same thing isn't it and then a concerted public relation effort will need to be made to reassure the buying and public and investor that smart peer has taken the necessary action to deal with the issue this will require drafting a clear 
statement communicated on the most appropriate medium so actually telling the public that the, that we have taken care of it that's also important to save the reputation which was initially damaged okay last point it is also important to stress the bank department that although prudent financial management of supply chain is key to business success any unethical behavior presents a major risk so this is what we discussed at the very beginning that we have to educate our team yeah some sort of training education that this, this is important for the company so you see that examiner is suggesting more than one uh, way to overcome this problem and that way you get like two marks for suggestions only okay guys uh, let's complete this exhibit okay the last paragraph of the exhibit shows or says reporting weakness okay there is an expectation that any serious breach of supplier performance or unacceptable behavior would be reported to senior management so that an appropriate measured response could be made however the word serious is rather subjective and it is entirely up to the buying department whether or not to escalate any matter consequently if a serious issue is not raised then buying and merchandising director would not be aware of any problem and so he would not bring it to the attention of the board so there is no there there are reporting issues that if the buying team doesn't think anything as serious they will not bring it to the director's notice and this will never reach the board of directors how alarming is that the absence of formalized regular reporting means that supply chain issue are only ever considered by the board of smartware when an exceptional event occurs and this has not been the case over the past 2 years therefore the board has been working on the assumptions that supply chain management in the company is operating efficiently and effectively when this audit has shown when this audit has shown this not to be the case this represents a serious internal control weakness which needs to be rectified okay suggestions so the problem can be explained easily because it's written everything is written here now if you're copy pasting some lines please give your own analysis to it but suggestions come on 3 4 5 5 any number is welcome yeah so there should be a proper clear uh procedure to determine what is serious okay what else excellent point by kagan defining the critical success factors and the kpis so uh, we need they need to sit together uh, brainstorm and just figure out what the important key performance indicators are and then uh, all the relevant points which are in the list should be highlighted to the buying and merchandising director educate the buying department about the importance of reporting issues excellent point buying department segregation of duties so yes exactly fiza has highlighted a point which i was also thinking that there should be segregation of duties so that the problem can be communicated and sorted and the decision so, so basically the problem is not overlooked and uh, frankly if there is a confusion about seriousness of a matter it's better to bring it to the notice of the director rather than thinking that it might not be serious so not taking a risk here right so reporting weaknesses can actually lead to poor decisions and that is not affordable yeah penalties in case of breach of contract on supplier side uh uh um yeah but that uh, here we are discussing the reporting weakness sanya so i think that's not a very relevant point we talking about the reporting weakness that the problems from the supplier are not reported properly so your suggestion should be around improving the overall reporting process okay
and uh, there should be some independent check on each stage of reporting again some um, evidence is collected and maybe you know documentation can be checked to see if something important is missed on regular occasion so yeah a couple of points can be discussed the rest you can read from the standard answer to maybe get some more ideas on this so that was exhibit five exhibit six now Oh, a very good point. Uh, Fizza is suggesting that we can do a value chain analysis after a certain time period to see what are the problems with the value chain. Actually, uh, it will be with the you know supply chain you're talking about, right? Not the whole value chain because the problem is with supplier reporting. So supply chain analysis can be done by an independent person or maybe by internal auditor. And report it to board right okay exhibit six guys exhibit six says that it's the customer database management system financial investment appraiser so uh, there is a question uh, there is one full requirement on this which requirement is relevant it was question number four part B but question number four part A also uh, was about discussing the uh, benefits of customer database management system right so I think exhibit six is for both but of course this financial appraisal is for part B where you have to discuss uh, the uh, evaluate this and the professional skill for skepticism so of course whatever is right we'll say it's right whatever is not right we will highlight that it is not okay okay now um, so NPV appraisal is given the time periods are 0 1 2 3 4 5 years all figures are in Millions rounded off to million dollars So let's do it guys quickly and can you please make your own notes in your own words To better understand this So the first uh, cost given is investment in CD MS technology and note one is relevant So how much investment 38 million dollars? Note one, total investment comprises initial capital outlay, sales tax on the purchase price recoverable through Norian tax authorities. So, okay, initial capital outlay, sales tax makes sense. It has initial installation and system testing cost. So, of course, we are getting the new CDMS system technology in. So, we need installations, we need testing staff training on the new system is also included as the part of the whole package and then it says five-year maintenance and support contract so five-year maintenance support contract cost is also included in this 38 million dollars do you have any doubts in these five elements of initial investment anything which is wrong if not then you can straight away say that everything is fine Uh, okay, so what about uh, sales tax recoverable, Manish? What would you say? Do you think that it shouldn't be taken care of in the um? Yeah, so maybe it is added and then subtracted. So, so what, one point you can definitely talk about uh, sales tax. Uh, just a second. Yeah, so you can talk about that whether the tax is correctly charged or refunded against the next net cash flows and you need to check the tax rules regarding this type of investment um, and if there might be chances to claim allowances so these have not been considered uh, but but this is more about you know the corporation tax okay so sales tax what else
Yeah, so most of you are highlighting that five year maintenance contract should not be taken into initial cost. Why? Because it's five year maintenance after the initial investment. So the cost will be paid in five years time, 20% each year. So it should be split. It should be spread over five years time, 20% every time. We don't know the exact figure of the maintenance cost. However, it shouldn't be here in year zero uh, as an initial outflow. Rather, it should be spread over five years. So that's an absolute valid point. And if explained well, can get you two marks. Training costs are fine, Fiza. Training costs, uh, you need to train staff on new system and that's the part of the whole package you uh, normally ask from the software developers. So I think training is fine. But yes, sales tax maybe, but five-year maintenance contract is a very strong point, two months worth, if well explained. <coughs> no, no, that, that we cannot just say. We will just highlight that this five-year maintenance contract shouldn't be there in initial outflow. We don't need the ex extra cost, or maybe you can write it at the end, that if we know the cost better, we could better be able to, you know, exactly tell how, which, how much cost goes to each year. But, you know, overall concept needs to be delivered. Sorry, uh, what about IRR? Initial investment is normally taken in present value terms. That if we invest $38 million right now and we get returns in other years, what is the NPV? So it's not about the timing of the cash flow. Honestly, that is going into too much detail. So let's stick to this five year maintenance contract problem for now. Okay. Now, um, operating cost is, uh, let's talk about this operating cost. Operating cost is $2 million every year. Yes. Do you see a problem here with operating cost? There's no note given. However, the value is standard $2 million every year. So is there, is there a confusion? Is there a skepticism which we need to demonstrate? Do we have a doubt? Yes, this is uh, not, this doesn't look very practical because it's same each year and at the same time this country is facing recession and inflation can go really high so when there is inflation how can we expect the cost to remain same exactly inflation and you know uh, keeping the cost same every year that is a little strange so we'll show our skepticism that this looks not very normal so uh, this needs to be further investigated and checked. Similarly, about additional contribution, it remains same. What about uh, additional contribution? Note two, it is estimated that CDMS will directly generate additional contribution from new, new and retained customer. Okay, so this contribution remains same over the years. So if there are new customers coming in, it is uh, assumed that additional contribution should increase over the years. Normally, this is how it happened. It, it normally happens like that. It, it keeps on increasing over the years, but this is again very same every year. Kind of is not very normal. Yeah, and, and the value is same over the year. This is kind of making me uncomfortable that there is, you know, um, there has to be a trend in the increase in contribution somehow. Uh, okay, interest payable on loan, note three, $3 million every year. 
So a new loan of 38 million will be taken out to finance the project with interest payable at 8%. So is there any confusion over this or this looks fine? Interest payable on loan. Now the people with strong financial management uh, concepts will definitely highlight this problem. So interest payable on loan is given as a cash outflow in NPV Performa. No, not the calculation mistake. It's something else. So I think I have so far a couple of correct answers. I'm so proud of you because I wasn't expecting a lot of students saying that. Interest payable on loan should not be included as a cash flow in investment appraisal. Why? Because it is already included in the calculation of weighted average cost of capital. Excellent. I'm really happy right now because uh, I was thinking that this might not be a known concept or, you know, it, it's so the question information is so quick that sometimes you're not even able to, you know, uh, figure out that, oh, this is also a problem. So, yes, that's a very good point. Okay, then you have net cash flow, then you have corporation tax. So you can talk about corporation tax. That is the tax correctly calculated. Um, are there any capital allowances that can be, you know, highlighted and that can be claimed? So that can be checked with the, uh, you know, country's tax rules. So a comment can be made on corporation tax. This is what I'm saying. Then you have discount factor, guys. What about discount factor? 10%. Note four is relevant. So the smart beer weighted average cost of capital of 10% is used as the project discount factor. So uh, is it is it a good idea to use weighted average cost of capital as discount factor of projects? What what do you guys have to say? Is VAC a good discount rate? VAC is the best discount rate a company can use. So we cannot question the discount rate in this question at all because VAC is the best discount rate you can use so that it is fine. Also, there is one more thing I want to tell you that the NPV here is $7 million. It's a big NPV value. So we can't even say that discount rate might be artificially set low to you know manipulate NPV because the NPV is so huge that even a little manipulation and discount rate cannot make the NPV negative. It's going to be a very weak point if we write it. So I think everything looks pretty fine. Cost of capital is fine. Now, in order to demonstrate skepticism, you don't have to write negative points. So for example, here we are saying that this is a perfect cost of capital they have used. No problems here. Right? <clears throat> yeah, because it accounts risk. So I think pretty much all points are covered, but just, there's one more thing you can talk about in questions like this, that for these kind of investments, there might be some working capital that needs to be injected throughout the years. So there's no mention of working capital injection in any of the given years. So maybe that is needed. So we are showing skepticism. So uh, comments like this can work too. So once you know you implement this uh, system, you might need additional working capital. Oh yes, yeah, sensitivity is always a is always welcome. Sensitivity analysis. So um, you can add one point on that to show off your you know knowledge and the examiner will like it you may get one mark or maybe half a mark to show the sensitivity and if you well explain it maybe more than one mark so yeah i think you're quite comfortable with this kind of analysis so yesterday we did an analysis of pid and today we did analysis of npv so if you are okay with these two performers given by other people and you're critically evaluating it anything else coming in your real exam you can handle that too, but do consider positive negative aspects both. I mean, whatever is right, say that it is right. And whatever is wrong, or you are uh, not comfortable about it, say it 
show your skepticism in your answer. Uh, sorry, uh, how can we give reference if some working done in spreadsheet? Oh, so um, do you think that there is a lot of uh, calculations you are going to do for this particular question? I mean, there are not, not any additional calculations you will be making here. Maybe sensitivity analysis. So I think if there is just one or two quick calculations, you might as well do them on calculator and just show the figures rather than doing them on spreadsheet and referring them. Otherwise, you can uh, write in the bracket as calculated in the spreadsheet document. Yeah, Vishal, is that clear? All right, guys, this is the end of all the exhibits. Now let's take a quick 10 minutes break here and then we'll come back and we'll quickly jot down um some of the points for some of the requirements to you know kind of take the case study towards the end but i think a lot of uh, things have already been discussed uh, on the exhibits so it might not take a long time you can ask your questions at the end okay so a 10 minutes break and then we'll jot down the points thank you very much
<laughs> all right can we uh, start so very quick uh, summary of all the requirements so first task was to discuss the external factors and uh, discuss the impact on mission and objectives five points were needed briefing paper was the document uh, or format so here in this question you can use pestle analysis maybe sort analysis but the key is that connected with the objectives of the company and discuss the impact of these factors on the company as we discussed uh, for a couple of points the second part was to assess the risk and suggest mitigating strategies and uh, evaluation skill was there five risks were to be discussed in the same briefing paper so what five risks so the first risk we discussed was the risk of not going and pursuing the technology aspect e-business what's the suggestion that company needs to invest in e-business technologies to keep up with the you know need of the time and technology and uh, to save some costs as well right then the other risk we discussed was the changing market conditions especially in terms of customers uh, preferences choices which are continuously changing now they are more inclined towards you know even lower prices as well as looking for better platform an online platform then there was a strategic risk we discussed that low-cost strategy might fail if they are not able to keep up with cost control right and um, so these were the three risks we discussed but a fourth and a fifth one we need to discuss so company has suppliers outside country in low-cost economies So you can discuss the ethical and reputational issue if you are not paying the fair wages in these countries or doing any unethical sort of uh, thing for example child labor etc that can be discussed also um you can discuss about that supplier being so far away if there are any changes needed to the product the communication becomes a problem so over emphasize uh, over reliance on foreign suppliers is kind of a risk and uh, also if uh, there is a consignment and uh, there's a problem in terms of quality or design of our clothes then taking that consignment back to the supplier fixing it and coming back will take a lot of time and meanwhile the customer preference might have changed again right so having foreign suppliers maybe a low cost option but a lot of problems in terms of lead times and fixing the quality issues on time so that you can discuss um, having ethical problems or ethical risks with supplier because they're based in low cost economy can be taken as a separate point okay um, Okay, Kagan is asking that, uh, can we discuss the macroeconomic conditions, the external factor risk in um, here? So um, preferably not, Kagan, why? Because uh, I have discussed that in question number one part A, like very comprehensively and as threats. So it's kind of become the same thing. And because we have other things to talk about, so why not talk about them? Okay, the supplier uh, over reliance on foreign supplier is the operational risk, right? You can name it operational risk. You can name it over reliance on external, um, you know, supplier outside the country or foreign supplier. And yes, Akis is absolutely right. Is there a foreign exchange risk too? Because we are paying in another currency. So if there is an adverse movement of uh, smartware or Norian currency against that currency, there will be a cost burden on the company. So what's the suggestion for this? I mean, what should we do to mitigate this risk? Hedging, and can you name some of the tools of hedging? Forward contracts, options, et cetera. Yeah, it's excellent. So, so name these uh, options. Uh, don't start explaining all these uh, particular options available, but name them at least, just to demonstrate a little more knowledge and commercial acumen. 
Uh, okay, then another uh, risk which can be discussed here is the risk of competition. The competition is getting more and more intense. And if we are not able to keep up with customer needs and demands, we might be left behind. We might lose market share and this might lead to the end of the company, which is a big business risk. So uh, competition is increasing because more and more people are now being price conscious as the market is growing. And at the same time, there are e-retailers coming in. So the competition is getting intense and there are so many sources of it. So you can talk about that as well. So these are the possible risks I can think of right now. There might be more depending on how you want to explain it. You, you do know that there is not one standard answer for SPL questions, right? Anything which is logical makes sense according to the requirement can get you marks. Okay, so task two was factors in Southland market which make the company successful as compared to Noria. I would re-emphasize by saying that whenever you are discussing the positive aspects of Southland, please do a comparison with Norian market. I'm more interested to talk about the ethical and strategic implementation in uh, B part uh, for shop closure because we had to demonstrate skepticism. So for example, um, change in perception of the company as it is closing down that they are di divesting. So, you know, the size and the scope of the company and the perception overall will change. That's a strategic issue, right? Then um, there was this mention of a point from one of the students in the session. I don't remember the name. That company will be able to increase some profitability because the cost savings are there. So, yes, that's a strategic issue. This is strategic. This is strategic. Another strategic is that uh, when you have free financial resources from this investment, your resources will be free. You can invest them in better opportunities. So, you know, here we are discussing the positive strategic things and negative too. So, whatever we can find. Then, um, having a social impact plus impact on employees unemployment that is an ethical issue right uh, what else legal and regulatory issue if there are redundancy um, costs and redundancy legal issues so that then at the same time, can we say that there might be some compliance issue? So when you are asking people to leave and you are closing down the business, there might be some compliance issues which we'll have to take care of and they can be strategic in nature. So I think the main um, ethical issue is uh, the employees and social footprint, etc. The rest of them are more strategic in nature, but that's all right. If you talk about these two ethical and the rest strategic issues, um, your answer will be considered as a balanced answer. <coughs> uh, any questions here or anything else we want to add? Yeah, redundancies uh, and the legal issue, especially regarding redundancy is going to be a strategic issue. And can I say ethical issues are actually strategic in nature? I mean, there's a very direct connection between ethical and strategic issue. But um, I just wanted to show you that when examiner is highlighting two different words, you should be talking about both. You don't have to write that this is an ethical issue or this is a strategic issue. You don't have to mention that, but just cover both aspects. Is that clear to everyone? Next, uh, task three, control weaknesses, recommendations. Um, the skill was commercial acumen, three to four points were needed, and the format of memorandum was required. Yep. So there were three issues. 
cost control. I think it, they were very clear in the exhibit. We don't even have to write it. Then there was this corporate social responsibility issue at the supplier's factory, the working conditions. And then there was the reporting and supplier's relationship issue. And one thing which we can remember is that we can give multiple suggestions for one problem if the points are less and the marks to get are more. It's a very good exam technique. Because there were 12 marks and there were three problems only, so we can give multiple suggestions to cover up the marks. So please note it down, keep it in mind for the other aspects uh, of syllabus as well, where you have to give suggestions. So for example, there is a topic where you have to suggest improvements to the processes or maybe suggestions to improve value chain, not only controls, suggestions. Other areas of syllabus might be asking to give suggestions, right? Okay, I, I'm telling uh, Kagan that you can give multiple suggestions for one problem in order to get extra credit or score. Because in this question, there are 12 marks to get and there are only three problems to discuss. So what we can do is for one problem, we can kind of give two suggestions per problem. So double the marks. But we'll have to explain each suggestion carefully. Now, what is the benefit of each one of it? Clear? Okay, so task four was the benefits of CDMS. So let's jot down some of the benefits um, for the company. So can I say that we will be able to engage more effectively with the customers? We have a proper system because current system is very basic. Then we can get benefits of big data and data analytics. If we have a sophisticated system which has proper information and analysis can be done through it. It can help with more data security. It can help with a more effective marketing plus sales strategy. And if you have a proper system, employees can work from anywhere, maybe from home as well, right? So this is a new added benefit you can discuss. Yeah, so you don't need to have a proper geographical location. That's what I was talking about. More flexibility. All right, so for NPV analysis, we have uh, discussed quite a couple of points. Um, or using exhibit six. I hope they were all clear. Now, as I suggested um, earlier as well, um, you have to read the standard answers properly and comprehensively and examiner report to understand, make sense of the case study more and to avoid those mistakes which were made by the students of this attempt. So you can get similar kind of questions and examiner reports uh, are very, very helpful. Uh, so you keep on doing them and they will help you. Okay, now let's talk about the benefits of integrated thinking through a slide. So what are the different benefits of integrated thinking? Very, very quick list. So uh, the integrated thinking provides the holistic view, bigger picture. This I have copied from the question. So it will give a holistic perspective or view uh, this will consider short-term aspects of performance as well as long-term aspects. Also, it will tell how company is actually creating value, not just financial return, but how it is creating value for society, for environment, for employees. So you can discuss all of these factors. Then overall, when there is integrated thinking, do you think it will bring in the 
improved reputation benefits in in the eyes of investors and government and all relevant stakeholders it will be uh, you will be better able to connect with stakeholders yeah so you will uh, the stakeholders will feel more connected with the company when they are talking about the stakeholders of the society and this can lead integrated thinking can lead uh, sustainable can lead to sustainable competitive advantage also because uh, all non financial aspects are also considered in this integrated thinking and not just short term profitability yeah so these are some of the benefits so uh, you can write these points like this on the slide but for explanation you'll have to use the speaker notes and um, the second part was to discuss how corporate reporting provides more useful information by highlighting six capitals so what are the six capitals guys the financial capital the intellectual the manufactured the human the social the natural capital so um, when you are explaining these points just add examples from the smart wear situation for financial intellectual capital etc to explain your points and uh, i think this is it from my side now the floor is open for questions uh, but let me explain the homework for you again read the answers with the marking scheme and read the examiner report and if you haven't covered yesterday's answer and examiner's report please do that come prepared so that each day you are gaining something and improving one step right <laughs> okay tomorrow we are going to be attempting another past exam from march 20 exam attempt and a very different case study a lot of emphasis on governance and change management and uh, some specific unique discussion points from the uh, questions information so we'll be doing that tomorrow so that's the plan for tomorrow now if you have any questions please let me know through the chat window Oh, very good question, Elena. So Elena is asking that in regards of risk, do we have to name the risk as strategic, financial, foreign reputation, or can we just, you know, uh, use the language of the question to explain the risk? So you do not 100% with guarantee, I'm telling you that you do not, do not have to name the risk. But if you think that you can name it very easily, then do it, otherwise, no. You don't have to because for one risk you can have a lot of different names for it is that okay Elena so basically naming a particular risk is not getting us marks it's the assessment how the risk is going to impact the company that is where you get the marks from all right um any further questions do you recommend some important topics to review such there is a high prog uh i will say cover the entire syllabus because uh there are no important topics it's an integrated case study so anything can be tested, but the new additions to syllabus are especially important because they're not tested so far. Artificial intelligence, the ethical issues with it, cover it from the technical article, maybe risk assurance, but other than that, try covering the entire syllabus, read from the notes or from the textbook. And try to solve one or two mock exams before the exam and get the feedback of tutor on it. So whoever is a relevant tutor for you um, in your college or any approved learning provider you're working with. So feedback on technical marks and professional skills mark is very important and try to solve the marks in exam conditions with exam timing, four hours.
um, in one uh, of the previous attempts, in one of the previous attempts, there was a question on PESTEL and the examiner gave PESTEL in case study already. Um, Asad, can you please tell me which exam attempt it is? So that I could be more specific in answering this. Mm. Uh, Fiza, are you talking about reading the notes or the textbook? Yeah, so, uh, but regardless, uh, of course, the integrated case study is very specific okay. to the current scenario and the current situation and practical aspects. So I agree with you that most of the time those concepts might not be directly tested, but we should be familiar at least with all the topics and all the syllabus areas because we cannot take this risk. Is that okay, Fiza? December 20. Um, okay, but December 20 exam attempt is not available. So I can't exactly say how it was tested. Can can you give me a little detail on it? Maybe then I could tell you. Yeah, so main thing uh, to practice for are the questions, of course, no doubt about it. But yes, try to cover the book or notes once already. Maybe next, get to the practice question straight away because through case studies you, you devise some concepts isn't it yeah you can email us at, that's that's a very good idea and uh, what is risk assurance Akis is asking so Akis I would very quickly tell you what is risk assurance so you know the uh, risk mechanisms which can be there in one company so for a smaller company it might be very simple processes and in a multinational, let's say there might be a risk committee and risk uh, department properly managing the risks of the company and a proper risk management process. Yes. So different companies have different mechanisms and arrangements for managing the risk. So risk assurance is that getting the assurance that all these activities on risk management, are they effective? So getting this assurance is covered by the concept of risk assurance. So there are so many sources of getting the assurances whether this risk management is effective and working properly or not. So um, the first line of defense or the first assurance comes from the ability of the management to have the system of controls, to have control activities. The second line of um, defense or the second assurance come from management having a control system so having the controls and then monitoring the control so the first line of defense is having the controls in place by management by directors the second line of defense or second assurance line is to have monitoring of those controls the third line of defense or third assurance even more better assurance comes from internal audit reviews and the fourth and last line of uh, defense or the source of assurance is external audit. So that's what the concept is. Very quickly told, but actually this is the concept. So do read it from the notes I shared on day one. And yes, the ACCA person has shared a link also. Let me share it again, where all the documents are available from day one. Um, I think, um, is the link even there? All handouts, yes. So let me copy and send it in the chat window. Just a second, guys. 
<laughs> I think I'm not able to copy, but um, just a second. Let me see if I could send you the link. Uh, I think the ACC relevant uh, person shared the relevant link to all the handouts for the day. If you don't have the access to them, please uh, do ask it from the relevant technical person because I can't seem to copy it in the chat window and I think um, they have copied it again. Yep. And uh, for recording, Fiza, you have got the link. The YouTube channel link. Yes, they are available at this link. Yeah, so a key is uh, absolutely so to make sure that the risk management is effective and working, uh, these four line of defenses kind of provides you assurance, and uh, this can overall increase the trust of stakeholders on the risk management processes of the company. Is that is that clear, Akis and the rest of the people who wanted to know about it, the risk uh, assurance? It's easy. It's you know not very difficult, but artificial intelligence needs to be covered through technical article. I shared that one too, but it's also available on ACC website. Just read it and focus on the downsides or the ethical issues more. Okay. So I'm assuming there are no more questions for now. So shall we end the session already? All right, great. Thank you very much, everyone, for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care and goodbye. Do come prepared for the answers and examiner reports of this case study, though. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you.